Every time I look at the moon, I never get bored of it. It is always mind blowing. This chain of mountains here, that has to be my favorite feature, I think, on the moon. You get these beautiful shadows. So you can actually see the, the shape that the, it defines the mountain ranges. My name's Mark Payne Gill, and I'm a wildlife cameraman. I've worked on a lot of the Attenborough shows in the past, so uh, life series, life of birds, life of mammals, and life in the undergrowth. And then on to some of the big blue chip series after then, so Planet Earth and Africa, Life Story, Life, and recently Planet Earth 2. Always had a natural curiosity for natural history and that extended from wildlife to astronomy as well. I was 16 and I was fortunate enough to have been bought a really high quality telescope. When I tested it for the first time, I saw two bright stars in the sky, I focused the eyepiece on it and it snapped into view, it was Jupiter. With four little dots of light next to it, each one with a moon. It was like a mini solar system. And then the next light, bit of light I looked at, I focused that and it was Saturn. And then that knocked me off my feet, just sitting there like a child's drawing, see the rings so clearly. Each time these things happen, I just got more and more enthusiastic, and passionate for the subject. And it's still, still with me today. So at the moment we've picked a really good night, it's really clear, we've got the first quarter moon overhead nearly and then further um, west of that we've got Venus which is super bright. It's just hard to know where the focus is. What you're seeing are the cloud tops on Venus reflecting the sunlight and they're so bright um, but we can't see the surface from the Earth at all, not even with the most powerful telescope because the clouds just enshroud it. Venus, because it orbits inside the Earth's orbit around the Sun, it exhibits phases just like the Moon does. I mean, interestingly, we've got a half Moon tonight, and we've got a half Venus, because it's almost at its furthest uh, point from the Sun, so the Sun's only illuminating from this side. Yeah, I think my hobby's just gone and just uh, got out of control a little bit. I always dreamt of Having my own observatory, sort of just the idea of it, just quite romantic, I suppose. The nice thing about astronomy as a hobby is that you never know when something weird's going to happen, and amateurs do see things and discover things all the time because they can put time in. And I'd just love to be able to record some strange phenomena that, that gets missed by other people, whether it's something like a supernova or an object striking the moon or, or Jupiter. Look at this, look at these mountains on the moon. That's how cool that, that is just stunning. That's why I do it every night. Whatever night I come out and look at, look at the moon particularly, you, you always see something different. There's so much detail to look at and the seeing some nights are not good, other nights it's better and you see features you didn't see the night before and the phase is different. And I never get bored of it. I absolutely love it. I'm always drawn to the moon as a, an object to look at through a telescope, particularly when I was younger because it was the closest thing. And that's still the same today. When you get nights of calm air, steady seeing, and you can see crater detail, mountains, valleys, which is unbelievable. Yeah, you have some nights, well, in this country, quite a lot of bad nights where no matter how big the telescope is, the images aren't very good. But then there are times like tonight where it's just really nice and seeing pretty good and it's just really satisfying. It's kind of why I enjoy it so much for those moments. Astro geeks are very different to wildlife geeks, I'd say, yeah. So I feel I do cross over into two worlds, which is a bit odd, but I never want to give up my day job because it's always nice to go back to that. But I, I can never let go of astronomy. It's, I mean, look at that behind me. It's, it's, it's weird. I sometimes look at it and think, what have I done? It's just like so eccentric to have that. I 
I, I don't want to wish my life away, but when I do get to that stage, I do look forward to actually being able to spend more time stargazing and observing, because there's just so much more to discover and I just don't have time. I can't explain it, I just love it.